Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today you may notice that I am not at home, I'm actually in London. Can you tell this is London? This could be any city. That's the shard. Today I'm actually meeting my friend Sophie Foster, who I haven't seen for ages, and we thought we would film this video together because we were speaking about it kind of hypothetically. We were like, do you know what, let's actually go and do it. So today's video is visiting London's top 10 Instagram locations. Now I've kind of compiled a list based off the ones that come up the most when you Google this, when you research it, when you Instagram it, when you Pinterest it, and it's it's generally the same places so I have made a list I've made a little map giving you guys a little bit more information if you are heading to London over the summer if you want to get some Instagram and if you want to visit some places that are a little bit more off the grid 50% of them are well-known locations 50% of them are slightly less known maybe you'll have seen them on Instagram before I don't know but anyway right now I'm just waiting for Sophie at Waterloo she'll be here in about 10 minutes so I'm very excited to see her I haven't seen her for like two years so we're just vibing I'm very excited this summer is about making good content seeing friends and just vibing so I'm very excited we're very lucky with the weather although I'm not gonna lie it's gonna get up to 29 degrees today so this might end up being a sweaty video subscribe if you're new around here and let's go and find Sophie I am now with Sophie, Hello. who has the reddest hair that I've ever seen. <laughs> I spotted her walking off the train a mile away. I was like, there she is. It looks sick. Anyway, we are at location number one because when I did a bit of research, I tried to plan it so that we were like starting at the closest one, which obviously makes sense. So that is dun, 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 London Eye. I feel like I don't really need to explain this. I am pretty sure you've all seen the London Eye before, but just in case you haven't, this is on the South Bank. It's the London Eye. So as I say, I think most of you guys have probably seen the London Eye before, but these were some of the inspiration photos that I'd looked at on Instagram and Pinterest and, and when googling it this apparently is London's top most Instagrammed spot in the entire city mainly from the north bank of the river but we actually took these photos from the south bank so these are the final photos obviously the sky is really aiding these but it is definitely a London must do obviously oh my god look how tame that is that is a London squirrel right there <laughs> is not scared of anything but yeah i don't know i wish you could feel how warm it is from looking at this but you can get a vibe for how sunny it is because it is a bit sweaty <laughs> Okay, so this one is a little more off the beaten track and maybe less well known. And we actually walked all the way from Waterloo to this cafe in Belgravia. This is quite a walk for reference, but the second location, and you might know it if you follow a lot of London Instagrammers and bloggers, is Peggy Portion Cafe. All right, guys, this is location number two. This is probably one of the most Instagram spots I've ever seen, although Sophie said she's never heard of it. I've never been here, to be fair, so I didn't know what it looked like in real life, but it looks pretty much like it's Instagram. Um, so we're gonna go in and maybe actually get a coffee because it is very hot. Unsure, because there are a lot of people. But they're all social media people, so. These are the inspiration photos. I can't even tell you how many times I have seen this on Instagram over the years. I'm surprised I've actually never been before. Anyway, these are how my photos turned out. They were quite difficult to take because it was actually really busy with tourists. So if pink and pastels is your vibe, it is definitely worth a visit to snap a quick photo and to maybe buy a relatively overpriced iced coffee. Okay guys, are you looking at house prices? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, my tenor. <laughs> we are in Kensington slash Notting Hill, like somewhere in the middle. And the next one on the list is a little bit random. I'm not sure if Sophie might be regretting her decision to just trail around after me <laughs> looking at random things, but this came up a lot. Like when I looked on Pinterest and Instagram, I was basically reading loads of people's blogs, like travel blogs, being like, this is a must see, this is a must see, this is a must see. This is one of the ones I've actually never heard of and I've never visited before. And I was like, okay, yeah, I fancy going there. I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you it because I'm not sure if it's really worth trekking out your way for, but it is pretty spectacular just as a standalone thing. Are you ready? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> So this is another random one that you might not have heard of and until researching for this video I had never heard of this location but it came up time and time again. So this is the Churchill Arms pub in Notting Hill. It's so random. It is literally just a pub that is actually all it is but it is very pretty. This is the Churchill Arms in Notting Hill. It's kind of just off High Street Kensington. To be honest I think especially because we caught it on a good weather day it does look beautiful. I've never actually seen a pub like this. However unlike where we just were in um I actually don't even know where we just were but everything down that street was super flowery floral down here it's like normal shops and like buildings and then just this which is actually crazy to be fair but fair play to them you know they stand out a lot i don't think we're gonna pop in but if you've ever been let me know in the comment is it a good pub does it do good food it looks pretty these are the inspiration photos and from instagram i can see that people love an outfit photo in front of this pub and you can definitely tell why these are how my pictures turned out i actually do really like them and i think if you're wanting to visit london and see some areas that are slightly less well known or just less crowded Notting Hill does have a lot of places like this. Guys, this is, I think we're on location number four. Oh no, five. 
So another kind of Notting Hill Lancaster Gate classic that I'm sure you've seen before on Instagram if you follow any kind of Instagrammer, blogger, YouTuber. And it is these houses, you've probably all seen them or some variant of very similar ones, but we are in Notting Hill area and all of the houses are different colours. And we've just picked two to match our aesthetic. So Sophia's naturally gone for the red because it's almost the exact same shade to be fair. I love that. Oh, very matchy. Oh my gosh, I feel like you should also get a photo with a telephone box because you sort of match a telephone box right now. But yeah, it's very cute. You've probably seen it before and if you haven't then now you have but this is very very popular on Instagram people deliberately come and dress to match them so that's what Sophie's done <laughs> by accident <laughs> these were our inspiration photos very much matching outfits sort of vibe these are how the photos turned out and Sophie actually also got some pretty sick ones in front of the red house to match her hair we have moved on from Lancaster Road which is where we just were we've bought water because it is so warm and I am sweating a lot but we've come from Lancaster Road onto Portobello Road which is like quite a famous street in Notting Hill because every single Sunday they have a market but from what I didn't realize was that they don't have the market every single day so I was like oh yeah Portobello Market that'll be cute it's a Thursday <laughs> yes it is and it's only on on a Sunday so this was gonna be location number five it's a tiny bit of a fail but I'm gonna film the street and show you what it would look like anyway because it's still quite cool it's a lot of like vintage stores, little cafes, graffiti, like artwork, that kind of stuff. It's sort of giving me like Shoreditch vibes a little bit. I'm like always like a smaller Shoreditch. Mm. We tried. There was always <laughs> going to be a fail. Is it even my video unless something goes a little bit wrong? So true. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so clearly this one was not a success. The market is only on on a Sunday, so bear that in mind if you are planning on visiting. But this is what it should have looked like, and this is what the general area looked like even without the market. Still super cute, and I really like the high street. Guys, this is the sort of vibe it would have been if I'd done my research a little bit better, but it's okay. Um, as you can see, I don't even know if you can see because of the light, but there is a market here. I'm pretty sure it's on on Sundays, so if you do want to visit and you want to get Instagrams, yeah, <laughs> Come and get your pictures on a Sunday. Not on a Thursday because you'll look like us. Guys, look at where we are. If you haven't seen Notting Hill, watch it. Sophie's telling me she's never seen it. I'm telling her this needs to be in our film series of movies she's never watched. Yeah. <laughs> well, add this to your list. But basically, guys, this is... Oh. Um, one of my favourite films and we just happened to walk past it so I had to get this in the video. I would say come and come and visit it but I'm not really sure it is worth it unless you're a massive fan. It is just a little bookshop. It's not even a bookshop is it? It's called a bookshop. Yeah, it's a souvenir shop. So after giving up on Portobello Road Market, we actually headed back into Central to an area that I'm pretty sure you'll have seen before, but never fails to look fab for an Instagram. And this was a stop off in Chinatown. Located between Leicester Square and Covent Garden, it's hard to miss it. Filled with loads of amazing food places, countless bubble tea shops, and it is a very popular tourist spot, but for a good reason. Right, we are now in Chinatown. We're back in Central. Oh my gosh, do you actually match down here so well with the I red? <laughs> so this actually wasn't initially on the list, but we just drove past it and. I I was like, do you know what? This is 10 times more like Instagrammable. I see this all the time. I feel like this is a classic. I'm walking through Chinatown, I'm walking through London kind of pose. And also might just be because the weather is good, but it looks so pretty. Like everything down here is just really, really cute. It goes all the way back as well. So I'm gonna turn it around and film it. Look at how cute it looks. It goes way back all the way down there. And then it swaps to like flowers halfway down. But yeah, if you haven't been here, definitely worth a visit. It's just around the corner from like Leicester Square sort of area. I've definitely filmed here before though. So these these were the photo inspos, but I actually really like how these photos turned out. I think it is a must visit. There's a lot of hidden food places, the views are free, and the location is amazing for being able to get to other places too. We are heading from Chinatown down toward Covent Garden, but we're not going to Covent Garden specifically. So I'm going to show you a little hidden gem of Covent Garden that I found on Instagram. Now, I'm sure some of you have seen this next one before, but it is definitely a little bit more hidden than the classic Covent Garden shots because this is Neil's yard. I'd seen this time and time again on TikTok, so I had to visit for myself. When I actually looked it up, I realized I have been before, but I don't think I've ever vlogged there. Oh, there's a sign for it. We want to be right here. I'm quite excited about it because it looks beautiful. Where are we going? I told you where we're going, did I not? No. We're going to Neil's yard. But yeah, this is a beautiful street. I think we're going to get maybe some food from somewhere as well because we've walked a lot already today. A lot of steps. Loads of good food places around here. I'm smelling a lot of smells. I don't know what I want because it's very hot. I was just saying, I was like, do I want an ice cream? So yeah, we need to get down here. Oh, it's giving me like Diagon Alley vibes. It is so cute, guys. I absolutely love this location i can see why it comes up when you search london's top most instagrammed spots so guys this is neil's yard and i think it's actually called neil's yard because it's the home of neil's yard skincare which i've actually never put two and two together but do you know the brand yeah. <laughs> well they're there but also look at how colorful all these buildings are it's very like 
Disney, Harry Potter. Just very cute, very pastel. Disney threw up on Harry Yeah, it's like actually, it. that is what it looks like. I love it a lot. I am glad that I found this one on Instagram, guys. If you haven't been here, it is literally around the corner from Leicester Square in Covent Garden, and it is beautiful. These were the rough inspo photos that I'd saved from Pinterest and Instagram, and obviously these photos have had a lot of colour enhancing. So these were my final photos. Very cute. They make my Instagram look very summery, and I definitely think if you're just down in London for the day or visiting for a weekend and you're staying in Central, this little spot is really cute. And there is also a really fab pizza place hidden here too. This is location number, I think seven. I've actually really lost count. So we're moving from Central London to more of the city a little bit. The proper part of working London where the bankers and all the fancy people hang out is a building that you may have seen me go up in the past, the so-called walkie talkie because it's shaped like a walkie talkie. <laughs> and at the top of it is the Sky Garden. It's free to get up and look around. All you need is to book a time slot. In my opinion, this is a London must do. Not many places in the city allow you to have views like this without paying anything at all. It is located on the 35th floor. So if you're not good with heights, this one's probably not for you, but the Sky Garden is a wonder in itself. I think this might be the best one that we have visited all day because I don't really know where you are gonna get better views of the whole city than up here. Like you can see the shard, you can see the tower, the eye. Also we've got really lucky because it's a beautiful day so you can actually see really far. Look, the Eiffel Tower. I'm not on Paris. <laughs> Despite being a bit sweaty and a bit warm, in good spirits, it's beautiful. Windy up here. It is windy, so there's a bit of a breeze. And yeah, I really, really like it. I haven't been here since I was about 17, so I feel like I can appreciate it a bit more. Don't want to get too close to the edge though, because I still am not great with heights, so. This is why it's called the Sky Garden. I do feel like it actually might be a one way system. Oh, look at this, guys. This is so pretty. You can see Wembley all the way over there. Oh my god. It's a little bit hazy, isn't it, on the horizon? Pollution. Pollution, yeah. Look at this, guys. This is such a good view of the city. Like, there's not many places you can get a view like this for free as well, by the way, because absolutely nothing to come up here. So, the inspiration photos for this look amazing, but obviously, on a warm summer day, the week that everything has just reopened properly, it was very busy. It was 30 degrees. And we were essentially in a 35 floor up unair on greenhouse in the sky. It was boiling. But if you go and it's a little cooler, maybe a little earlier in the day, I really do think it's worth a visit. It's got gorgeous views. It's a great location. And these were our photos. We took a couple outside on the balcony and a couple inside with the plants. Definitely add it to your list if you want to feel slightly more fancy for the afternoon. Although maybe be prepared to take out a small bank loan if you are going to be ordering drinks up here. This is location number eight. This is another little hidden gem in like the center of the city pretty much. So basically, it's a church. Did not heard of this or seen this until I saw a TikTok where it was like, places in the center of London that you should visit next time you're there. And I was like, oh, where is that? And then I looked and it was right next to the Sky Garden, which is where we just were. So I thought, Do you know what? We'll add this as location number eight. It's giving me sort of like Hogwarts vibes a little bit. I think maybe just the way the windows are. You would not know that literally right behind us is like the gherkin and the shards right opposite. This looks like you literally could be just in a church in a town. I think we can get inside it somehow. Guys, would you believe that this is literally central London? Like we're in the city right now. Look at this. Just saying to Sophie, you could literally be like on holiday in Spain or somewhere. It just looks very like Mediterranean, kind of hidden. I think maybe the palm trees are also helping that effect, but we saw some girls sitting up here for a photo and we were like, oh, we can do that. But there's just no way you can climb up there. Like we actually, I don't know how they did it to be honest, but it does look cute. Also, I think that street light's framed really nicely, but yeah, I definitely recommend a little visit here if you're ever finding yourself kind of near the tower. So these are the photos that we looked at. They've been edited really lovely. It makes it look almost magical, quite secret garden-esque. And these were our photos that we took, kind of similar. I actually really like them. It has a completely different vibe to all of the others. It doesn't really look or feel like you're in central London at all. I love this next spot. This is one of my top places in London. Not so much a hidden gem or even a secret, but I definitely think it's less spoken about than it should be, but still a popular Insta spot. Again, in the middle of what is otherwise the city of London is Leadenhall Market. Oh wow, that's actually so sick. Wow, that wasn't what we came here to film, but this works too, you know, either or. Love it. Anyway guys, this is Leadenhall Market. I've definitely filmed here before. Fun trivia for you, they did film a little bit of Harry Potter here and I really, really like it it's really cool very funky there's quite a lot of little shops like regular chain shops but just with really cool fronts and like just all looks a little bit different and then clearly there's a little bar as well this is very cool guys i really really like this 
These are the inspiration photos. And what's great about this area is that it's always changing. And these were our photos. We actually found this gorgeous bench to take pictures on. It's like they knew we were coming. It's the final countdown. <laughs> Location number 10. And the final one, this last couple of uh, hours has felt like a bit of a mission. We have got tired legs, but it's worth it because this is Tower Bridge. Almost as obvious as where we started back at the London Eye, this is Tower Bridge. It's classic London. It is really not a hidden gem, but it is one of London's most Instagram destinations. And it's obvious why. This city has a few staple landmarks and this is absolutely one of them. Oh guys, this is probably the best view that you can get whilst on Tower Bridge. We're gonna cross over it now, but uh, we've got the last photos, we completed it. Yay! So the inspo photos for this were amazing. It was as if the city was empty when these pictures were taken, but being in the middle of the day, verging on rush hour, the photos that we took were actually harder to recreate. However, I still really like them. We took the photos on the bridge, but another classic spot is by the city hall on the south bank of the river. Guys, I'd just like to add that I've carried this empty water bottle around with me because I have not seen a single bin since we were in Notting Hill. Bear in mind, we've walked like almost the whole of London. Yeah, we have <laughs> basically done a marathon and this has just been chilling in my hand the whole time because I'm like, what do I do with it? No bins. Um, so it looks like I'm taking it home with me. Because, souvenir. Yeah, this was my day in London. <laughs> this is what I brought home with me. I am leaving Sophie in Waterloo now. Thank you for coming with me. I had a great time. Did you actually though? No, I did. Are your I... feet disagreeing with that? <laughs> yes. No, it has, it's been really, really fun. It's been just a little bit different. We've seen a lot of London that I've never been to before. Me too. Um, yeah. Like yeah, which is actually crazy. But anyway, we're gonna part ways now. So I will catch up with you at King's Cross. And yeah, I'll see you soon. Hopefully not two years from now. Yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> I am very clearly now back at home in my office. We walked 28,000 steps around London. I have never done that many steps in my life. My legs are still recovering and it's been a solid five days. So if you have enjoyed this video, do give it a huge thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below, which was your favorite location? Have you been to any? Where else do you think I should visit? I definitely know that there are places that I haven't included on this that are probably way more pretty, way less known about, slightly more off the grid. I kind of want to do a few videos similar, but like with food spots and food places, because my top most asked question is, where where do you recommend to eat? Where do you recommend to drink? That's definitely something in the future that I would love to do. As I said, give it a thumbs up. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe down below. Thank you so much to Sophie for filming this with me. It was lovely to catch up, to explore London together and thanks for walking 28,000 steps with me because I don't think I could have done that on my own. I should be back on my channel on Thursday this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!